This is Christine Somer of MassapeopleNews.com. For the Newsweek ending July 25, 2006, the following synopsis and commentary is sponsored by the opinion letters to the editor. Take a look. Come on, I dare you. In political news, while the race for governor grows even more competitive and controversial between Attorney General Elliot Spitzer and County Executive Tom Swasey, yeah, I said it. We at MassPeakerNews.com are going to lay off of that just for this week and focus more on the elected officials we spotted out and about town. This week alone, we ran into Town of Oyster Bay Supervisor John Venditto at the Dion Warwick concert. Supervisor Venditto is well-spoken, articulate, loved by his constituents, and possesses enough charisma to spare. If you have anything negative to say about Supervisor Venditto, don't tell me because I will choke you. We met Senator Campanen for the first time and have formulated no opinion just yet. <laughs> we, spotted, we spotted New York State Assemblyman Joseph Saladino and Town of Oyster Bay Clerk Steve Labriola at the Fluke Tournaments. While their fish didn't place first, second, or third, we think the world of it. <laughs> Take a look at the photo of Steve Labriola holding his fish, and take a look at those dimples. No, not on the fish. In community news, the controversial offshore windmill project designated for four miles off the Jones Beach shore is still fired up. Between the message board and letters to the editor, it's stoking. Poking at this blaze are civic associations, residents, and elected officials. Where do you stand? Um, um. The photojournalist coverage of the Dion Warwick and Marshall Tucker Band concerts at John Burns Park are now published on the events page. Take a look. We get our cameras backstage to provide the best coverage, and believe me when I tell you, we are fortunate to go behind the scenes. When we first began covering Music Under the Stars, we were received just about as well as a leper might be. Now, we're up close and personal enough to see that the Marshall Tucker Band is in need of a good dental plan. I give my opinion because I can, and that's what I do. Do you want to know what we found in Dionne Warwick's trailer? One, she wears Gina Tate just like my mom, and two, she exudes the grace of royalty. Check in at the message board on the MassPeakerNews.com homepage for details on the following upcoming events. The Starship Concert, Massapequa High School's reunion of the class of 1976, Teen Night Out, Jacob's Light Fundraiser at Cartridge, Cartridge World on Broadway, the salute, to, um, um, <laughs> the salute to America concert and fireworks with Lee Greenwood, the 7th Precinct's National Night Out, and the Board of Fire Commissioners testing of audible fire alarm systems beginning August 5th and continuing each Saturday at 12 noon. Sorry. In just outside the community news, we webcasted live the Baldwin Celebrity Golf Outing and published the coverage on the events page. We interviewed Carol Baldwin, Alec Baldwin, Otis Anderson from the Giants, Greg Buttle from the Jets, Dominic Cheyennese from the Sopranos, Dan Gauthier of One Life to Live, and Jackie the Joke Man Martling. We asked each of them what breast cancer meant to them personally what early influences pointed them in their respective careers, and what hurdles they overcame, and how, and what advice they would offer mass people use in their career goals. <laughs> Jackie Marling. <laughs> Get the cat. Jackie Marling <laughs> was the only celebrity with answers rich with sexual under and overtones. <laughs> We had to go live, right? <laughs> Leave her.
<laughs> we're still editing. Stay tuned for the final clip. And lastly, in criminal news, arrested and charged with petty and grand larceny were Amityville, Brooklyn, and Wontor residents. I'm telling you for the last time, we don't want you. Yeah. Stay out of the greater Massapequas if you are predisposed or are compelled to steal. We thank you in advance for your cooperation. Only one DWI arrest this week, but that's one too many. What don't you get about consuming alcohol and getting behind the wheel? I'm going to make this really simple. Don't do it. An employee of Quick Test in Sunrise Mall reported the larceny of cash from pocketbooks that were locked in a locker. The key to open the locker is left on a hook next to it. This is Sucker's Play Man. You guys are Quick Test. Run a quick test on how safe your valuables are locked in a locker when the key is not around. <laughs> Too loud. Party City on Sunrise Highway caught on surveillance tape two jackasses crawling around the counter, opening the Party City money box and stealing its cash. Jerkass! The owner of Fiesta Dry Cleaners on Park Boulevard reported its rear bathroom window was broken and an egg was tossed inside. I don't even know how to respond to this one. A 2005 Infinity Suburban on Madison Street had its tires slashed and a profanity etched into the driver's door. While the FCC does not monitor what I'm saying, I still would rather not repeat the bad word. But I will say this. Etched into the door of that Madison Street Suburban is the slang term for the male genitalia. <laughs> Before I comment on the Cadillac of news stories, I'd like to give a special thanks to PNAJ Wardrobe Consultants. Thanks, Jay. Here comes the Cadillac. A 1993 Infinity parked on Sunrise Highway was the subject of an iPod theft. The thief once caught will become our favorite whipping boy as he dropped and left at the crime scene his cell phone. <laughs> I've spoken my piece. Be well or be published here next week. <laughs>